Hi everyone. I hope you're ready for chapter three today. So if you'd like to read along, you're more than welcome to. If not, just sit and listen to the story. You're absolutely welcome to. So on chapter three, 40 winks. The next day, and the next day, and the next day after that, I smiled at the new boy and gave him a friendly wink just as often as I could. My goal was to give him at least 40 winks a day because that's what mum says everyone needs. But after a while, my eyebrows started to feel funny. I could tell the new boy was finding it interesting because he stopped looking at everyone else and kept looking at me. But then Michael saw me trying to wink with both my eyes, one after the other, and I said I looked like I needed a doctor. He probably said that because I can't wink with my left eye as well as I can with my right eye. So I decided to stop winking quite as much. That week, Mrs. Khan was teaching us all about photosynthesis and gave us a small pot with a seed in it to look after. Everyone was excited because she said there would be a prize for whoever grew the best, best plant. Even the new boy got one. And I kept, I think it made him happy because he kept on looking at it. I tried to whisper lots of cheerful words like rainbow and popcorn and marshmallows to mine because I read somewhere that if you tell plants about how happy things, it makes them grow quicker. I'd never won a prize before, not even at the fairground. I thought if I tried really hard and kept talking to my plant, I might win this time. And if I couldn't win, then I wanted the new boy to because he really seemed to like that plant. But I was worried about Brendan the bully brooker. He's the class bully. His cheeks are always pink because he spends most of his time chasing anyone smaller than him around the playground. He's not very clever and hates anyone that is. If anyone gets a top mark in class or a prize, he'll try and beat them up at home time. I saw him looking at Amit's plant and narrowing his eyes, just like he always does when he's thinking of something mean to do. I didn't like it one bit. His most common trick is to trip you up on his, with his feet. He always, likes to chip, he always likes to tip up your lunch tray as he walks by so that your food dribbles down your tress like runny eggs. He's done that to me a few times. Sometimes he gets caught, but most of the time he doesn't. And even when he does get caught, he doesn't get detention. Most of the teachers seem to like him though. Maybe it's because, that's, because when he smiles, he looks like one of those boys that sing in a church choir on television. Mr. Thompson used to call him a rascal, which must have been a good word because he gave Brendan the bully a wink and a pat on the back whenever he said it and then let him run off again. That made everyone else in the class, except for Liam and Chris, Brendan the bully's only two friends, hate him even more. Even the bullies in the upper years find him annoying. It's funny how bullies don't like other bullies. Maybe it stops them from feeling special. But in school, everyone knows who the bullies are and who they like to bully. And no two bullies can go after the same person. It's a strange system, but those are the rules and everyone sticks to them, even the teachers. But Mrs. Khan is different. She doesn't seem to like Brendan the bully as much as the other teachers. She's always watching him. And ever since we were put in her class, he's been careful not to do anything around her. I'm still going to keep an eye on him though. Soon after the new boy joined our class, lots of rumors about him began to be passed around the playground like an invisible game of pass the parcel. Most people believe Jeannie and she said, and said that the new boy must be dangerous and that's why he was never allowed out. But then other people started saying he had a super contagious disease and that was the real reason why we weren't allowed to talk to him. The disease rumor scared Clarissa so much as she tried to sit as far away from him as she could without leaving her chair. One time, she leaned over so far that she crashed right into the floor. She didn't lean away so much after that, but she always put her arms up or used an exercise book as a divider. I didn't think the new boy looked in the least bit dangerous or like he had an infectious disease. So the rumor I thought sounded the most true was the one that said he was from a super rich family and that his parents had sent him to our school undercover so that he wouldn't be kidnapped. Michael said kidnappers wouldn't come to our school to look for him because it wasn't in the posh area and Tom agreed. He said that when he had moved from America, his older brothers had told him they must be poor now because they were going to live in the poor end of London and not in the rich end. I don't really understand what he meant 
because London doesn't have ends. On the map, it just looks like a splodge of jam. I want to ask the new boy if the rumour about the kidnappers was true and if he needed us to become his bodyguards, but he was still doing all his lessons on his own and every break time and lunch time he would disappear so no one except for Clarissa could talk to him. And she want, didn't want to. I tried to catch his eyes so I could smile at him and whisper, hello, but Mrs. Khan caught me and told me to pay attention to my work. Next, I tried to send him a note made into a paper plane, because I'm good at those, but it flew wonkily and hit Nigel on the head instead. He's a tattletale and told on me straight away. I hate tattletales because they seem to like getting people into trouble more than anything else. And they always smile when they're doing it. Mrs. Khan came and took the note and read it just to herself. She shook her head at me, but I think she must have found the drawing I made funny because her mouth gave a tiny smile that only I could see. Even though I didn't get told off, I knew it'd be too risky to send any more messages by airmail, especially with tattletales around. The next day at break time, Josie, Tom, Michael and I decided to follow the new boy and find out where he was going. But Mrs. Khan caught us following him in the corridors and told us not to do it again. She didn't seem angry, but she did say that the new boy needed to be in seclusion for a little while longer and that it was for his own good. So we promised not to follow him anymore. What does seclusion mean? Asked Josie when we went back out into the playground. None of us knew exactly, not even Michael, although he said it sounded as if the new boy needed to have a private treatment, like a really sick person in a hospital. So maybe he did have an infectious disease after all. But it wasn't long until we found out what seclusion really meant and why the new boy needed so much of it. And that's the end of chapter three. Nice short one there, wasn't it? And next time it's chapter four, what Mr. Brown and Mrs. Grimsby said. But we'll read that later. I wonder if they're going to say something good or bad or exciting. We'll find out.